Hello boys and girls, Lord Hawkeye here again. So the big news, particularly in the world of video games these days, is an all too familiar one. Women are objectified and that's bad. Everyone rushing to wag their fingers and white knight for a bunch of women who I guarantee will not be appreciative for their efforts in the slightest, and any opposing views will be swiftly silenced and hand waved as just the evil rape culture patriarchy talking. And I, for one, am pretty much fucking sick and tired of it, and I doubt I'm the only one. <laughs> yeah, this madness needs to stop, and here's the main reasons why. 1. Not all female characters in video games are eye candy. This one is just plain wrong, and allow me to demonstrate with one of the more popular targets of the Do Not Offend Crusade, Mai Shirinui. Yeah. The feminists love to rag on her for her preferred mode of dress that leaves little, little of her plush figure to the imagination. But here's the part they conveniently skip over. The game Maya appears in also happens to feature this, this, and even this. And yet, they're never talked about. And everyone claims that women are nothing but eye candy in games, when the truth is... Mai's curvy figure and revealing attire are in fact an anomaly in her own game world. King of Fighters fe features characters of all shapes and sizes, but because that also includes sexy and curvaceous, that somehow makes the game sexist? And King of Fighters is not alone in that regard either. Take stock of all the female characters in gaming and tally up how many of them actually are scantily clad glamazons. Is it really that rampant a thing? Perspective is a wonderful thing, boys and girls. Variety is the spice of life, even if it means you're going to run across things that aren't to your tastes. Some do like it. Accept that. But, even if you do think the num even if you do the numbers and you think the ratio of glamazons is disproportionate, that brings us to reason number two. Number two. Even when they are, where exactly is the fire? Let's take the most recent moral outrage, the sorceress from the upcoming game Dragon Crown. Once again, people hold her up as an attack against women, and they aren't even swayed by the fact that she's the only female in the game who looks like that. The Amazon is bulky and muscular, and the Archer is slender and petite, almost androgynous even. The fact that the entire game's art design is centered around comical exaggeration of physical features, anyone seen the war here? Doesn't seem to dent the moral outrage either. But here's the question. What exactly is the moral argument against sexualized women? It promotes rape, they say. Okay, A, there's no evidence of that. Sexualization in media is very common these days, and yet the rate of rape in the civilized world has gone down. Meanwhile, sexualization in media is almost unheard of in, say, the Middle East, and yet rape is not only common, it is both morally and legally tolerated in many parts. See my point? B, rape has nothing to do with sexual satisfaction anyway. Rapists do not rape for the sex, they do it for the power rush, and frequently out of misplaced hatred against their victim. If you actually care about the subject, please take some time to do some homework on the subject. Don't spread misinformation. Or the other, re or the other reason is, it implies that women are just objects. Okay, where exactly does it say that? It doesn't. You're making assumptions, and very narrow-minded ones at that. The artist behind the sorceress actually made a post that explained the reason for her design, and it was rather interesting, actually. What do you usually think of when you hear necromancer? You think a withered old man commanding legions of the undead. Well, he thought that trope was boring, so he designed necromancers with a more maternal look, playing off the whole idea of bringing life to the dead. Their design is thus, is thus based off fertility statues who, surprisingly enough, are known for having large breasts and thus the sorceress was born. Did all this make the do-not offenders pause and think? No, they hand-waved all of it and assumed he simply must have designed her that way purely as masturbation material, because we all know everything men do is all about sex. Folks, this is just absurd. It comes off sounding like you learned everything you know about psychology from watching sitcoms, oversimplifying and stereotyping to the point where you just look like idiots. Now, when an artist designs a female character in that way, that does not conclusively mean he's a chauvinist who thinks women are objects. It doesn't even mean they necessarily think all women should look that way. It only means they thought the look suited that particular character. And while you may disagree, you have no right to baselessly slander them just because it's not to your tastes. 
And speaking of personal opinions, reason number three, even if an artist is provably a sexist, so what? Folks, you share this world with over six billion other people, all with various values and viewpoints. Even if you did prove beyond a doubt that someone is a sexist based on their artwork, and you can't prove that, don't forget, that finding would mean nothing. The artist is entitled to their opinion, however boneheaded it might be. If their views bother you so much, vote with your wallet and don't patronize their work. It's as simple as that. Number four. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's not a woman thing anyway. When it's inevitably pointed out that artwork of male characters is just as exaggerated and idealized much of the time, this is of course swiftly hand-waved with, It's a power fantasy! It doesn't count! Well, what are you saying? Women don't fantasize about being sexy and powerful? If you think that, I invite you to attend a con and check out cosplayers. I think you'll find the experience very enlightening. Secondly, you need to understand something. Male characters aren't marketed on their looks as much because that's not what women are into. While women are often judged by appearance, men are more often judged by what material benefits he brings to the table. Look at a lot of male characters that women fawn over and what do you see? Fancy cars, expensive gadgets, uniforms, or elaborate armor that suggests rank or social status. Why? Because our instincts have this bad habit of thinking we're still living in the Stone Ages. Back then, men needed a wife who was as healthy as possible because childbirth was dangerous, and those were the days when people dropped dead at 30, so a second chance to procreate was unlikely. Since women had to take care of the kids, they needed a man who was better able to hunt and gather efficiently, and if he had good connections with the rest of the tribe, all the better. And thus, here we stand. So women do have their own flavor of shallow desires. As long as you're not selling people short, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so judging female characters based on their looks is unfair, but what about all the cases of one-dimensional and poorly written female characters? Isn't that all bad and misogynistic? Well, I'll certainly grant that it's bad, but misogynistic? Hold your fire for a moment. Take a broader look at your favorite example of one-dimensional female characters. Take a look at the rest of the cast. Did the writer put effort into them and then shaft the female character? Or maybe are you starting to see that the problem lies elsewhere? Yeah, I've mentioned Metroid Other M and its inexcusably poorly handled portrayal of Samus before, but the real question is, is that due to sexism? Or did they just inadvertently create a monster through bad writing? Considering that the writing as a whole is very poor in quality, none of the other characters are any better written, and the narrative commits the cardinal sin of trying to tell this whole story through monologuing, I have to place my bets on the later. You can rag on Princess Peach all you like, but Mario isn't exactly Hamlet himself, folks. It's not a woman thing. It's just bad writing, and it needs to be addressed from that angle, or else you're not really solving anything. And reason number five you're giving the wrong message to developers. Now, in the spirit of fairness, let's say you're not convinced and you still insist women are getting the short end in this industry. I will grant, I do think there is room for more female protagonists. I read a webcomic with the, with the female protagonists myself just to do my part in showing people how it's done. Shameless plug over. Even granting all that, the way most people are going about it is only ensuring that it won't happen. You see, while I'm sure the feminists are used to politicians bowing to their every whim to win votes, this is the magical land of capitalism, and it doesn't work that way here. You see, when you complain and nitpick and look for misogyny and everything, you know what message the game dev developers are getting from that? That message is, we just don't like video games. At all. And so the game devs figure, okay, no point in trying to market to these people, so let's not bother and go back to making gun beefcakes 20xx. You need to understand, you're not entitled to equal representation just because you exist. This is not politics, this is business. Remember, women don't exactly have a long history of supporting gaming back when it was new and still on the fringe. So to suddenly jump in once it's become trendy and expect the same treatment as those who raised it to that status in the first place, that's just not realistic. I'm willing to bet a lot of the women who rally against video games these days are the same ones who completely turned up their noses at video games back in the 80s and the 90s. You all know who you are, don't lie to me. So, what should you do then? 
What's the conclusion of all this? A couple things. First, stop turning everything into a personal attack against you or your gender. Men are not out to get you, and trolls do not discriminate. There is no patriarchy, there is no secret conspiracy to subjugate women. Believe me, if there was, I think we'd be using much more effective tactics than trying to demoralize women with video games. I mean, come on. Second, be clear what exactly you want to see about gaming. Wagging your finger endlessly while providing no solid feedback is just wasting everyone's time. Third, put your money where your mouth is. I hear people constantly going on about how great the protagonist from Beyond Good and Evil was, and yet the sales is... The sales on that game kind of tells another story, I'd say. Actions matter. Words don't. If you hate a game's content that I like, I don't care. That's not my problem. And the game devs care even less. If you want to see more of a certain game, buy it. Every businessman knows there is a huge difference between what people say they'll buy and what they actually do buy. If you're not being represented, it's because you haven't convinced the devs that you're worth representing. Yeah, squeaky, squeaky wheel doesn't get the grease in the capitalism. Squeaky wheel gets replaced with wheels who actually turn. Anyways, and finally, a little practicing what you preach wouldn't go amiss either. <clears throat> Women don't like feeling excluded from gaming, gaming, and that's perfectly understandable. However, do make sure you understand that it works both ways. For example, if you're one of those ladies who goes all, Ooh, that's so creepy, when faced with boys who like material that was primarily aimed at girls, you need to cut that shit out right now. No, no, no. Seriously. Cut that out right now. Fair is fair. Judge not lest ye be judged. I'm sure we I'm sure we all know what I'm talking about. Okay, are we all good now then, boys and girls? Cripes, that was long. Sorry. Until next time, be aware and be wise.